Mm. Okay, we're recording now. And uh, first, I would like to model the process because uh, I'm the only person who knows how the empathy circle works. Uh, I would like to ask one of you to be first speaker. You can talk about uh, the, the, seven, uh, the, the second principle or whatever is alive for you right now. You can always choose different topic, that's the rule. Uh, and I will be first active, uh, active listener, so I will model, I will show how we uh, reflect back, okay? So who would like to be first speaker, please? would like to try you are muted Marguerite yeah I, I will yeah I can try start okay so I will start time okay Oops. thank you mm -hmm. so um yes I have um I've done a couple of these circles in um more yeah not through this but um somebody i am um, is, is in the working group i was involved with i was involved with um mass mobilization you know and um one of the people in that was running an empathy circle so i practiced twice but um i'm sure it'll be a bit rusty okay so you're noticing uh, that you had the opportunity to practice empathy circle twice. You were involved in uh, uh, mass mobilization mm -hmm. and the group, and then somebody was uh, facilitating empathy circle. So you know a little bit how it works, but you're saying that you it might be rusty. You are not sure how you remember that. But um, yes, I particularly like this series where, you know, looking at the values and principles, because that is probably the, one of the most important things I feel XR has. Um, because I, I did a bit of um, canvassing for Greenpeace many years ago, and it never had this. This is the, this like regenerative culture. It's sort of, I see it as, well, it has a it has a better a framework that people can understand. And as Claire said, something you know. Um, so let me reflect what you uh, already yes. said. Uh, um, so you were um, somehow involved uh, in Greenpeace, and there was no such thing like values and principles. And you believe this is very important because that creates a framework everybody has to fit in. And this is very important for, for movement and for regenerative culture. You mentioned regenerative culture. Yes. Um yeah um and you wanted to uh to quote what claire was saying well i think she sort of mentioned something about igniting people's hearts you know and um and i suppose the question like it is we set our mission on what is necessary well necessary is a big that's big now we have to work out and I was looking at some of the notes, you know, and um, it is a huge, a huge task sometimes when I was looking at those notes. And I, um, and I did hear April sort of saying about giving people or helping people develop resilience you know that's that's important not only you know um yeah so will i let you sorry yeah mm -hmm. yeah but because it might be complicated so yes uh first of all you noticing that 
Well, Claire mentioned something about igniting people's hearts. Mm -hmm. So yes. that's one thing you mentioned. Uh, another thing that this idea of doing what is necessary is actually a lot. Right mm. now, it's it's enormously great thing to do, and mm. uh, everything that's happening is enormously big, and uh, so it's not something small. What we need, it's not like doing only what is necessary. It the, the, this only necessary is a lot. Mm. And um, I think I missed something. I lost something. No, I think I think I think that's. Um, I've got a cat here. It's getting a bit uh, restless. But um, yes, because it's um, it's changing so many parts of uh, the system we live under. You know, it it is the media. It is the the finance it's the government it's just it that's what i meant by huge we're um because i i mean when they're talking about 3.5 percent you know it's um i guess when i was in mass mobilization well i still am to a certain extent but it's winding down because of the virus um oh, this cat is going this cat is going mad <laughs> it's biting me um but um Yes, um, that was sort of getting enough people out onto the streets in a rebellion and enough people, yeah, and, and maybe a certain amount who prepared to get arrested. That's what we were, were looking at. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel it, it is, um, there's so many systems that we're, well, is it systems of power? What is it um, they call the pillars of yeah, I'm not sure that quite too. But to, to to finish off, I just feel I I haven't um I wasn't involved in the April rebellion in the UK. I always regret that I didn't. It just looked so fantastic. But I did get involved in in October to a certain extent, and I do feel XR has definitely um you know brought the the issue into public awareness. You know everybody is pretty well aware now whereas before nothing was being said you know you had climate deniers on the radio but yeah so um yeah so let me try time is up yes uh, but i will reflect what you said uh so first of all uh this um huge thing we have to do what that is necessary is actually all the pillars of the power all the systems we have to um kind of um move change uh, impact in some way sorry for my english sometimes i feel lack of words mm, and when you 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 didn't participate in April rebellion, which you regret, but you um, but you uh, participate in October rebellion, and the whole thing to do what is necessary was to put people on the streets, to hit the streets with mass mobilization, mobiliza mobilization. And it worked, but the whole thing is to impact the system, the, the all the systems that are involved. And you think that actually Extinction Rebellion did great thing because we changed the media narration narr narrative. Media started talking about climate catastrophe that didn't happen before Extinction Rebellion. So this is actually a great thing that was achieved by Extension Rebellion. Is that what you meant? 
No, I think I feel very hurt. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. So I have habit to show my telephone. I don't know if you see that. And that doesn't mean that we uh, stop talking in the middle of the sentence. It's just the uh, information that time is up, but we end our thought and the active listener reflect back. So that's how it happens. So this is just the signal. Okay, we have to wrap up. Okay, that's all. Okay, so now it's my turn. I become speaker. And I'm choosing another listener. And I'm choosing you, James. Would you listen to me? You are muted. Yeah, of course I will. I'll okay. do my best. Okay, <laughs> let's try. Uh, um, I'm thinking. I don't like the idea of three and half percent. In this principle, we very often talking about mobilizing, mob, mobilizing three and half percent of the population to achieve what is necessary. That's that's the idea. What is necessary? We need three point five percent of people engaged in our ideas. I stopped there. Do you want me to reflect that back? I'm hearing yeah. that you don't like the idea of three and a half percent being the necessary number for mobilization for us to achieve our goals. Mm -hmm. is, is that pretty much what you wanted me to hear? I don't like it, yeah. yeah. Uh, why? Because I certainly agree that we can't, uh, we can only do what is possible and our uh, capacity is limited. That's obvious. But 3.5% is about bringing down dictatorship. Well, maybe somebody thinks that we live in dictatorship, but it was the outcome of scientific research about political uh, um, revolts and revolutions in many dictatorships. So researchers discovered that we need just 3.5% of population involved intentionally in a movement, and this is enough to bring down the dictatorship. We are not talking about bringing down dictatorship and taking power. Extinction Rebellion is not interested in taking power. Okay. Can I reflect that back mm -hmm. before I get lost in the narrative? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hearing that sort of like you don't like the number of 3.5% because you see that as being something around bringing down power systems whether that be dictatorships or governments, and think that that's different than our goal is Extinction Rebellion. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, we don't want to govern the, the world or our countries. We want to change the culture, the civilization that destroys our planet. And that mean, means that we have to change much more, much more much bigger percentage of society has to be involved in this change. 3.5% is not enough, I'm, I'm afraid. So because you see that <laughs> the changes that we want to see within our societies are quite huge and big, and in some respects even larger than the figureheads, like whether that be the government or a dictatorship, Mm -hmm. that there's a requirement for more people to be on board than three and a half percent. We have to change our culture. We have to change culture on, on many levels. Uh, on our personal habits, on uh, social relations, also economic I like to say economic culture because I believe it is a culture. Um, 
all that stuff we need to change. And that's that's huge, huge task. So recognizing that so many things need to change, <clears throat> like our personal habits, like our societal habits, mm -hmm. and our economic habits and the economic culture that we live in, mm -hmm. which will affect everybody's lives in different ways, mm -hmm. is why you think that we need much more people than three and a half percent on board yeah. Yeah. and behind and with us. Yeah. Thank you. I feel fully hurt. Thank you. Okay. As you Thank see, you. I end before time. It also might happen. If you feel that this is the moment you want to stop, you can stop. Okay. Now, actually, my time is up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now it's your turn, Jim. Jim. Okay. Uh, I'm happy and... with either, by the way. <laughs> okay. And you choosing active listener. Um, Marguerite, do you want to actively listen? Um, yeah, I'm going to have to talk about sort of what's close to my heart right now, I think, sort of, and maybe try and, and put it into the second, frame it around the second demand and, and look at how my local group is trying to mobilize around a common goal and interest and how that shifted and changed in the last few weeks as a consequence of COVID-19. So there's, there's been a bit of, I think people have felt a little bit lost to start off with and felt a bit adrift whilst we thought about what it's like to be here in this time and how to approach and to look at what needs immediate needs are required and how best with our skills we can meet them okay so yeah there's been a shift for us uh, wait a, wait a second give chance sure. to yeah. margaret sorry yeah. <laughs> no um you um you were sort of talking a bit about your local group how there was um they were sort of unsure about which way to go, go the, the sort of goal to have, especially in this, you know, crisis of um, the virus that's made them unsure about where to move, where, how to move. Is that right? Um, I think it's more about looking at how best to respond to the current situation. And that's created a shift in focus away from, preparation for what was going to be the next rebellion mm -hmm. to now looking at how we develop our actions and skills around how to respond to concerns around COVID-19 and a shift away from actions into regenerative culture and embedding regenerative culture within the group and our wider community. So yes, because um, initially we were aiming for the May rebellion and this um, has changed your local group's focus, that you're more on to how to approach, um, maybe you're talking about um, supporting people around the virus or how people are, are experiencing around the virus and, and regenerative culture. You definitely mentioned regenerative culture. That, so it's become a different uh, issue in a sense is that right yeah pretty much that's pretty much right i think because i'm based within the regenerative culture team locally and to a lesser extent nationally in the transformative conflict justice team <clears throat> it's always been a big part for me and one of my main reasons for being within xr and and see that as being one of the main system change factors something that should sort of like underpin and embed a lot of the things that that we, we've been speaking about earlier you know like the, <clears throat> the the shifts and changes to our daily habits the shifts and changes to our social habits our cultural habits and our glo global economy habits should shift away away from those selfish um, destructive behaviors and more towards regenerative and supportive behaviours and 
looking at how we can use this current crisis as an opportunity to push regenerative culture to the to the fore. So that's where as as a, a local regenerative culture team is, is what we've been trying to achieve and, and looking at how to put things out there. Okay. Um so yes you've you're in the regenerative culture group of your, your local group as well as in the transformative justice group to a certain a lesser extent. But um uh you certainly feel i sort of was hearing that you feel this is an opportunity this the the covid 19 crisis to really perhaps i don't know if i'm hearing more than you said but an opportunity for your group maybe xr generally to um create change because of their um because of this regenerative culture that's embedded in xr did i hear that correctly mm. yeah pretty much it's kind of almost what i'm saying i think well oh, please finish then <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. I, I think it's about look, using the opportunity to embed it more fully within 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 our xr culture to look at how we can push and expand it further out to push and expand it and embed it more within XR. Yeah. And beyond. And, and beyond. beyond. And beyond. But thank you. That was great. Well, well thanks for the experiment. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So, Marguerite, now it's your turn. Um, you have to pick up one well, of them. Um, I'll take Jim because you listened before. Jim, would okay. you like to listen? I know it's a bit hard sometimes with just three. Yeah, no, of course, I'm happy to listen. Yeah, it's, you know, I've enjoyed listening to both of you. And, um, and yes, I suppose what I was, um, yeah, thinking about as you were speaking is, yes, it's, um, it's not only those systems, of pillars of power, if you like. It, it is the toxic system that we've been living in, you know, um, how how it's all, it's all being based on competition and um, selfish, you know, looking after your individual. And, and I guess, um, you know, this is sort of, I think, the emphasis on regenerative culture too. I think uh, I feel, and like Carol mentioned, um, oh, I've lost the plot there. Um, Sorry, let me try and feed yeah, back. No, yeah, 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 sure. yeah. I think I think I was beginning to drift a little as well, so I apologise for that. But what I'm hearing is sort of like what you heard the other people speak about just now is giving you an opportunity to rethink some of your own thoughts around current day culture and what the potential changes may or may not be. And, and you talked a little bit about the toxic elements of of business as usual mm. in relation to kind of selfishness and, and greed. Yes. But I know I've missed bits there, so I do apologise. No, that that's um, that's the the crux of it. Um, and yes, like Carol mentioned, like um, it's more than three point five. I think she said it's a larger, and it's it's um, it's changing people's minds if you like that we're not just and to me seems that's something i haven't really i mean of course we were trying to get people on board um but um yeah and i suppose i'm going off on another thought and um i'm feeling this this virus you know people have slowed down and um, I'm sure they're reflecting about what's important, you know, um, and I've noticed, you know, when I'm out, you know, people do seem to be, you know, there's a feeling of friendliness there that wasn't as much there before. Okay. So I'm hearing that there's an agreement with the need for more than three and a half percent to sort of like encapsulate the idea and that this 
current situation for you is sort of like your observations have been that people have slowed down and there's there's more open friendliness with, with, with between people that maybe wasn't there before. And that's right. How how do we move forward? How do we move forward to um because yeah, because <clears throat> I felt we lost a lot of people in um in October. You know, a lot of people when I, I I've always been a bit reluctant to tell people about I uh, I I've been involved with XR because you know, and I started telling people and sometimes people would say, Oh God, you know, they all the fly posting and um you know they just i haven't had a very sometimes a very good reaction and um and the disruption people don't like the disruption so i feel in, in two minds about it you know um um yeah so, let's let's reflect. Reflect. <laughs> so, <laughs> sometimes you've found it difficult to talk about xr or being a member of xr with other people because you think sometimes that they've had a very negative view of us post the October rebellion around issues of disruption and you get that, oh my God, kind of thing going on sometimes with reaction from people, which makes you hesitant to, to talk about being a member. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, so, um, I suppose I, I could finish off now. I must be coming up to my five minutes. But yes, the question is, is how do we, um, this, you know, how do we people get people to um, appreciate the regenerative culture that's such a, an important part of XR? Because I think that will attract a lot of people. Um, but yeah, so. So you're thinking sort of like, how, how do we get people to see what underpins XR? Mm. Yes. But uh, thank you. That was a good opportunity. Thank you. I feel listened to. Thank you. Okay. You, uh, Jim, you're picking up somebody. Okay. <laughs> um, would, would you like to reflect back then, Cara? <laughs> yeah. Okay. With pleasure. <clears throat> mm. Okay, I, I, I quite like the value of silence sometimes. I was allowing myself that pause <laughs> and to reflect on, on some of the things that each of us have, have said and looking at how to build on that and struggling a little, but not too much. <laughs> and I am going to stick with the regenerative, I am going to stick with the regenerative cultures theme and you know pick up on and expand on some of the stuff that you were saying about you know the necessity for it to be more than three and a half percent and and recognizing that you know that the sort of change that we want to see does demand a lot from individuals and i sometimes worry about what that means for certain individuals who might you know not even have you even ever thought about it before mm -hmm. let me try <laughs> let me let me try, okay? Sorry. You're breaking. Jim, are you with us? Can you hear me? I stop time. Uh, yeah, but you're breaking. I don't know why. Sorry, it might be because I just moved something. Is it fine now? Yeah, now it's fine. Okay. Okay, I will uh, restart time. Okay. Uh, so, oh gosh, I was distracted. Um, so, first you said that you like silence. And you appreciate the moment of silence and thinking about everything that was said. Um, it was you let yourself to do that um then you said that you want to stay with the regenerative culture theme theme and the the idea that that actually we need 
more than three and a half percent because we want to change the culture and and we want to change people people's approach attitude and you wondering how other people understand those values and regenerative cultures and how they understand the change that has to happen in them yeah mm -hmm. and and to recognize how that would how beneficial those potential changes can be because for some people that would mean <clears throat> elements of sacrifice and change you know change is sacrifice in some respects mm -hmm. you know for moving away from a certain way of being or whether that be toxic or not and into something that's healthier and more beautiful it's still change and, and most people struggle with change mm -hmm. so it is about looking at how we get as many people on board as possible with the message and know and understand it in more of a full way as to sort of like why why it is that we want to see this change happen and that shift away from from the greed and toxicity of, of the current system that we're into a much more regenerative and more sustainable culture. <clears throat> so, because that can happen without everybody being on, on board, because it will affect everyone. So the change we're fighting for will change everything. And actually we need, you said something like we need practically everyone on board and this process onboarding to XR is very important because, uh, and with this process, it is important how we understand the change. Uh, because change mean is difficult for most of us, very difficult. Uh, very often it requires sacrificing something and even if we understand that this is change from a toxic system to more healthier culture it's still demanding and challenging and difficult to do and because of that especially you think that that process on, of onboarding is so so much important mm exactly exactly and if we move and look at our current situation which has kind of forced a lot of us to to embrace and that's that's where i see the opportunities some sometimes you know, mm -hmm. out of the current situation that that globally we find ourselves in is because we've been forced into that change suddenly mm -hmm. and, and it shows the potential that we have to move quickly because I, I, rec I also recognize that there's an urgency. Uh, you're referring to COVID-19? Yeah. No. Okay. So but more uh, about the changes that it's, that it's brought rather than the actual thing that's created the changes. I'm not focusing on the disease. So if I understand you correctly, you mean that we suddenly has been forced to to the process of change something is happening right now there there is also emergency that's one thing and we should create the change but suddenly we are forced to the to such process anyway kind of is that what you meant mm. kind yeah of, yeah yeah so so that's what's happening now and we should um, exploit and uh, and use this moment is that what you meant exactly yeah okay thank you okay so now it's my turn mm, margaret would you listen to me thank you yes okay um this is a very interesting circle. Very, 
Uh, I'm very happy that uh, that we met in this circle because I feel like we can resonate and build something on. So everybody says something and next person builds something on it. So it's great. I love it. So um, you you really enjoying this circle, but um, you're glad we've come together because we're building on each other every time somebody yeah saying something further yeah so i was thinking what margaret was saying about um distraction and the fact that many uh friends or people she knows you know uh, um don't like extinction rebellion and wreck allergically uh when they hear about disruptions and xr they got allergy on it so to speak and uh, in the same time i was thinking about creating the trend because i feel like jim is talking about creating the trend in society Actually, we all are talking about creating the trend, the movement uh, in society. So, so there are two elements I want to connect. I stop there. So, um, yes, you, you sort of feel there's two elements that, um, um, yeah, you, uh, I've just forgotten the first thing you said was um, the about I made the point you made about your friends and the people oh, you yes. know who doesn't uh, who don't like extension rebellion and disruption that is yes that's right those and then the other side of creating more change in in the general population the more regenerate generation mm -hmm. and actually in empathy circle team we developed the idea of new form of NVDA, nonviolent direct action, which is actually empathic direct action. And we have idea that for now is abandoned because of COVID-19, but we hope we come back to that idea. It is idea of organizing empathic direct action, organizing mass empathy cafe on the streets on the squares where people talk to each other and reflect back what they are saying okay so you're talking about a, a, a new form of non-violent direct action that is in sort of um involving empathic circles of, yeah. of happening on a mass level in the streets that you sit and talk to people mm -hmm. um, listening to them using the same techniques yeah and it might happen between two people and it might happen in circles for of four or five people but my vision is the whole square the whole street crowds doing the same thing it's that uh, might be a uh, enormous impact on our culture showing such thing and doing such thing practicing such thing during the protest during the occupation so you're seeing this happening where you take off a whole square of maybe it's just two people or four four or five people in a group mm -hmm. in a group um using the process of an empathic listening um i think you had something else at the end um but you yes you feel it could be a huge experience yeah during the occupation yeah. during yeah. The, the any uh, actually our mass direct action that's happening on the street when we again organize such event i hope it will gonna happen 
I would like to make, we would like in Empathy Circle team, we would like to make at least one point of our agenda of, on our, of our protest to make such an event, huge event, engaging a lot of people, uh, inviting bystanders, people who just bystanders by witness uh, our protest, engage them, talk to policemen, try to involve them in such a practice that might be interesting that's something that changes relations between people so you see it as when when there is a mass protest that you, at least one agenda maybe you um would have a large empathic situation yeah. and involving bystanders and maybe even police yeah and you know getting them would to talk and listen to be listened to would be yeah. quite a an opportunity and it would be different phase of uh, extension rebellion because mm. it's hard to say that this is disruption mm. yes so it, it would be hard to call this disruption. Yeah, my time is up. Thank you. I feel fully heard. Your Thank turn. You. Your turn, my Well, brother. yes. Um, but choose somebody. Well, um, well, would you like to hear? You, okay. You, you, thank you. Um, yes, I suppose I was thinking too. Um, I still feel it is important that we get change you know you know like um i don't think you know the airline companies and the, the fossil fuel companies should be bailed out after this um after this crisis is finished mm -hmm. um and i'm hoping you know because i i'm always in um very impressed by the amount of imaginative and creative people in XR, you know, um, and certainly seem to be very good at the tech side of things, <laughs> but um, that they will find ways to, to create a protest. Yes, I'll let you, mm -hmm. yeah. So you're thinking about the situation after COVID-19 and you hope that uh, that um, companies that um, contribute a lot to the climate cri catastrophe, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. airlines, airlines mm -hmm. and fossil fuels companies, uh, will not be bailed out. Yeah, I'm sorry yes. for my no, no. pronunciation. Ba bail it out. Uh, and you hope the Extinction Rebellion, which is you are impressed by how um, uh, people in XR have uh, great imaginary and can uh, in in um, develop new ideas, yes. new yes, yes, new yes. new projects, and you hope that we will. Uh, in Extinction Rebellion, uh, somebody will uh, invent a new ideas and uh, create protests that help stop. Because I do feel um, it, it, it's um, it, it yeah, because we are so close to. Um, you know, well, we are, we, we, we're going to, it is going to be quite serious what happens. And, um, and I do feel we must do as much as we can to reduce, you know, the, the climate catastrophe, plus the, you know, every, all the, the ecological crisis. So I do feel that is pressure on governments. And I suppose also, I feel we have a big arguing point that um, if the government can spend as much money as they, they have on this crisis, then, you know, we, we, 
we can say, well, the before they wouldn't spend anything, they couldn't, wouldn't do anything about the climate crisis. Well, now I feel we can argue that, yes, they found the money for this crisis. They can find ways to, to mitigate the, the disaster that we're facing. Mm. Mm. So, uh, you hope that um, that the government will not spend so much money on, on those companies. But uh, the most important thing is that uh, you, I feel I missed something, but uh, you said that this government, your government, found money to fight with the COVID-19 crisis, which are huge money. Mm, and yes. that means that this government can also, also govern the process of change because of climate catastrophe. It can, can invest money, put money in the process of stopping climate catastrophe. Yes, yes. yes. And that, that effort is possible, this, this, uh, this step. So mm -hmm. this crisis shows it's possible. Hmm. Yes, through through investment in um, in uh, sustainability, um, in in you know um, perhaps generating more local local business, um, uh, you know, and um, you know uh, energy that isn't destructive you know um mm -hmm. natural yeah i can't think of the word but mm -hmm. uh, yeah mm -hmm. yeah so you mean that uh the money should be put now in a moment of the crisis is kind of moment of the change also for climate catastrophe and chance to put money in a reconstruction of economy in mm. uh in those industry that less harm or doesn't harm uh, climate and ecosystem. And this mm. is the moment we can do that. Mm, thank you. I feel heard. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, Jim, would you listen to me? Definitely. Yeah. That was my first. Uh, At this door. Oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, that was my first feeling mm, when the crisis with COVID nineteen began. Okay, this government in my country in Poland is able to function and govern in a state of emergency. We were calling for state of emergency because climate catastrophe. Now we have state of emergency because COVID-19 and this government is able to, to, to deal with it. Okay. So what I'm hearing is your first thought when this catastrophe struck was that your government has been able to respond and to deal with it as an emergency, as a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. And that's left you with questions as to why they, they were reluctant to do the same kind of thing around the climate emergency, yeah. which you also yeah. see as being an emergency and something yeah. as immediate. Yeah, yeah. So I like this point Margaret has done, uh, that um, we see that our government are able to function and to act in state of emergency and to change to make very deep changes in our uh, economy if it's necessary they are able to do that and that give us gives us right to fight for it in the in for the sake of climate and ecosystem okay. So because they've been able to make those drastic economic changes and shifts and mm -hmm. to invest trillions of mm -hmm. amounts of dollars and pounds and mm -hmm. whatever 
neurons. <clears throat> that gives us a good opportunity to argue the same thing for the climate. Mm -hmm. And I remember this argument we were um, using that to stop climate catastrophe and ecology, I like to, to talk about climate ca and ecological catastrophe because they are both. So to stop it, uh, we actually need a social effort that is comparable with the situation during World War II. I remember such idea and I agree with that. And actually we now become, well, there is no war, but the situation, economic and social situation of millions of people is changing like during the war. So That's what you're happening seeing now, now. Mm -hmm. what you're seeing now is people behaving in a way and governments governing in a way like there was a war and reflecting back upon some of the things that have been stated within Extinction Rebellion that would take a war-like effort to bring about the changes necessary to deal with the climate and ecological mm -hmm. emergency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, uh, that's give me a, g g gives me a hope. Suddenly, I feel like that that gives me a hope. So it is possible. That's what I realize. It is possible. So you can uh, see that it's possible because it's acting out. Mm -hmm. in our current situation in in this current emergency yeah and i would like add only that i don't know how it sounds in english but in polish when we say that's about social movement it might it might means an organization but also a social trend a social trend yeah Sorry, it's, I was sorry. I was looking for clarity on the last word because I didn't quite uh -huh. hear it. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that it doesn't just need the social organisation, but it needs a social trend. No, no, and no. I, I was uh, I was talking about the word movement, social movement. In Polish, when I use the, those two words, it might mean uh, an organisation like Extinction Rebellion or any other organisation, but it can also mean just a social phenomena, uh, phenomenon, uh, a social trend. That's what okay. I mean. And I like this fact because I like to think about Extinction Rebellion as a organization, well, liquid organization, uh, and the social movement that is a trend, a social trend. Okay, so just to reflect that back, <clears throat> so when you you say social movement in polish i do think it's something similar in english you can say the same thing but organization and social trends and shifts in terms of trends can be described as a change in social movement mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you're seeing that as being the the positive thing that we can we to help to move things forward yeah, yeah. Sorry, I do think I've missed something there. I, 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 I meant that we are social movement. We are social trend. Extinction yeah. Rebellion is a social trend, not just organization. It's a social trend as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I feel fully hurt. It's your turn. You choosing somebody you will speak to. Um. Magritte, are you happy to? I'll try to be fair so that something's not talking. I know. <laughs> There's only three of us, we don't get much of a prank. Yeah, I'm kind of liking what, what all of us are saying, expanding on what you said last time you spoke, Caro, around. It's been really nice to look at how we've been able to build on each other's thoughts and experiences.
and I think my thing is around nonviolent disruptive action and civil disobedience. I'm not anti that. And when I come up against people who maybe can't see the <laughs> the power in nonviolent direct action and civil disobedience, I'm quite happy to explain to them why it is that we're doing it. Although I also equally think that we need to look at how we can do things additionally and differently. Okay. Okay. Good okay. Yes. Um, so you've you've liked the way we've built on each other in our discussions, and um, and you're not averse to nonviolent direct action and disruption, and um, you're quite happy to to talk to people why we need to do that when when people want to know, and that's as far as I think I remember. So. That's that's pretty much fine. <laughs> well, I guess maybe just, just to expand on it a little bit, it's, it's a, I'm comfortable with it because I, I I see how it fits in with a the theory of change. <laughs> but at the same time, I can now see the shift and the focus of how we need to do things a little bit differently, even if we just look at the civil liberty restrictions that we're currently under even without taking the disease factor into consideration you know we've seen so, as being sorry i missed that could you repeat that last bit looking at the civil liberties restrictions that we're currently living under would make it kind of impossible mm -hmm. even before looking at the disease factor and how that would make it um hugely irresponsible and <laughs> So, so we need to be thinking about other ways of protest right now and other mm -hmm. ways of mobilising and other ways of getting a message across and other ways of bringing about change. Mm -hmm. That's the challenge. Mm -hmm. So um, you feel in this sort of situation it's very hard to do non-violent direct action. So we have to think of things a bit wider about, um, yeah, and how you see, I think from your previous point, I may be missed. That's why you're talking about the regenerative culture, I felt. Yeah. Yeah, I think shifting into regenerative culture, I mean, that was from some of my past comments, sort of like right at the very beginning, and sort of like, yeah, it's still very strong and true to my heart. And even within the nonviolent direct action that we did, I still saw regenerative culture as being very much a very big part of the process of every action that, that I was personally involved in and every, pla every part of the planning of every action that I was involved in. We made sure that um, regenerative culture, resilience and looking after each other <coughs> was very part of every stage of the action. You know, I was, I was in part of the Action Wellbeing National Team, so it just kind of makes sense that that was what I was doing. But, um, Wait a so, second. Um, so yes, you, um, you've, you've always, when you've had actions um, and maybe with rebellion, you, um, the regenerative culture has always been a central part of um, the way you look after each other and um, developed resilience. And I think you've, you're invo involved in well-being as well. So um, that's where you felt this regenerative culture was important too. Yeah, just kind of recognising that it, it does exist within in XXR, XR culture, but looking at how to embed it even even more across every every rebel. Within my action team it was it was possible. But I'm kind of shifting I think I'm moving away from the points that I, <laughs> the feelings I was trying to express. <laughs> but that's fine too. <laughs> I think it's sort of. I think for me now, it's about looking at new possibilities about how do we continue to to protest within the current climate. What messages do we want to get out there, and how can we get them out there? Those are my questions. Are their questions. So your question is, the new messages that, that we want to get out there in this 
um, virus crisis and um, how we want to get them out there and how do we do it. Um, yeah, which is, which is not so easy. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Um, Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it gets tiring, this. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, reflective listening and uh, speaking. Margaret, I suppose it's last turn whom you're choosing, whom you want to speak. Um, James, would you like uh, to have a go? Or do you want a break? Do you feel well, okay? I'd be fine. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, have a, I'll have a go. <laughs> um, yes, well, this is... Um, I sort of feel we have talked um, in two levels yes this um sort of regenerative culture is important and also the direct action and to get um governments people in power to to change so i think there's an opportunity maybe we need to xr needs to work on both levels i think i think they are sorry i'll let you yeah. Thank you, because I'll get lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're hearing, I'm hearing you say that sort of like you've had to speak collectively about things from two different aspects. One from a regenerative culture aspect and looking at nonviolent direct action and with questions around how, how do we get the government to listen and to change. And I suppose personally too, I feel my experience. Um, yeah, you know, when I was involved in the October Rebellion, you know, a little bit. I never got arrested, but I I did find it uh, quite exciting. You see that, um, you know, that's. Um, but I also feel from some recent um, involvement, I I got a bit involved with the HS2. This is uh, you know the uh, the train line that. Um, is going up the middle of um, England and, and uh, involving knocking down ancient woodlands. And um, yeah, and I did get arrested, which I didn't intend to. And um, part of that was because I, um, I was, um, probably I didn't have enough NVDA training. And um, yeah, and um, and also not enough experience in de-escalation that I was getting quite heated. So I feel I've got a lot to learn in, um, in the sort of the area of being more, um, yeah, seeing things as uh, people all together rather than, you know, the opposition and I'm, you know, so yes, I'll let you go. Can yeah. I be back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hearing you say that you took part in, in the October Rebellion and I was quite excited by that. But you're putting some importance around arrest. And for some reason that that didn't make you feel so so involved and then you've gone on to talk about HS2 which I'm very very aware of well done thank you for doing that <clears throat> and that you got arrested but but didn't feel so prepared for arrest so you had questions around how how you you dealt with that process and maybe felt that you weren't First of all, there wasn't the intention, and secondly, sort of like by being there, you, you didn't feel as prepared as, as maybe you felt you could be. Does that sound about right, Marguerite? Yeah, that's right. And um, and just um, maybe if I hadn't have been so angry, the police may not have got so angry, and we could have kept it, and they might have, yeah, they might have not reacted so quickly. Mm. So because of your own personal reaction to what was going on, you think had some bearing on, on what happened afterwards and, and moving away maybe a little bit from nonviolent communication and 
<coughs> non-violent direct action. Yes, but I feel that um, now I've jumped in, there's uh, no turning back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up to being arrested again. <laughs> So now that you've been arrested, you're more than happy to get arrested again if, if uh, you've had that experience. But, um, but thank you. That I feel listened to. Okay. Appreciate it. Whom are you choosing, Jim? Oh, is it my turn to speak again? Yeah. <laughs> that comes around so quick. Yes, it does go around. <laughs> Caroline, if you don't mind. Okay. Okay, I will. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I want to. I want to look at sort of a little bit more around what next in some respects, because I do think there's been a little bit of a a shift and a change, and and you know, it's that question nationally been been answered by XR UK. I can only talk from XR UK perspective because that's where I am and, and I can't talk about XR Global unfortunately. <coughs> so you would like but, to you would like to talk a little bit about uh what is next and you will you can speak only from the uh, XR UK perspective, because that's the only you, uh, the perspective you know, the view mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And, you know, questions around whether any national decisions have been made in light of, of the current situation that we find ourselves in. Because, you know, I think there has been a big shift in in focus and we have to sort of like bear in mind you know this may go on for quite some time the the clawing back at our civil liberties and um, restrictions on movement and restrictions on the right to gather and what can we do in the meantime how can we continue to build our movement how can we continue to get the message out there how can we effectively bring about change within our governments mm -hmm. when it's obvious to everyone that changes really necessary and within the current climate and the opportunity that we have out of the, the situation that we're in so if i understand you correctly uh there was uh put uh, a huge attention to uh to the climate catastrophe but then it was shifted from it kind of into other things and now, and the other thing is that um, the civil liberties were limited civil uh, in your country, and uh, movement can't act as before. And the thing is, what can we do in this situation? And as I, a movement. As a movement, as a movement in this situation, when there is so limited, uh, the opportunity are quite limited, the, the the possibility are quite limited. Yeah, it's very it's very different for me. It's a very different political landscape. It's a very different and indefinite period of time where you know nonviolent direct action at the minute is is not an option mm -hmm. we we can't go out on the street civil disobedience mm -hmm. in a physical way is is not an option we can't gather in groups of more than two mm -hmm. or in groups larger than a household and mm -hmm. i know that extends further than the uk and what does that mean for for strategy what does that mean for mobilization over the next six 12 months, two years, how, how, how long does this go on for? And you know, questions around, around that, but they are questions, but that is about mobilizing around the goal. I don't think, however, that, that the shift as an organization has moved away from the climate catastrophe. I don't think that's been lost at all. Oh. But that, that there's a shift in the focus of, at how to look after our communities and how to look after our neighbours and you know I've, I've seen that in, 
in in various aspects of Exxon UK, okay. where where we're we're we're, we're moving heavily into getting a regenerative culture out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Both so within the movement and outside of the movement as individuals that represent the movement as XR individuals. So you're correcting me that you didn't mean shift from uh, climate catastrophe, but rather shift in uh, perceiving the situation into uh, regenerative culture and that sort of direction uh, how yeah, to see neighborhood how to see uh, local situation that's what you mean yeah there's been a, there's a shift in, in how how we shift in focus about how to respond to the current situation but not not but at the, within the movement i'm sorry within within the xr within the xr london movement for sure okay okay but, so um, so not the expense of of not at the expense of the climate emergency and it still tick tick ticking away mm -hmm. so so there is a shift in a uh, in a way we um, <laughs> perceive the situation in the movement into more regenerative cultures uh, and the the in general, political, you said political landscape changed a lot now, and a lot mm. of things are not possible. Uh, we can gather in groups bigger than two people, and we have to keep distance between each other. And a lot of things, a lot of methods, tactics, Extinction Rebellion used before, now it's impossible to use. So, exactly. so what in such, and this situation will last for next many months, maybe years, we don't know how long. And the thing is, how can we act? What can we develop? What kind of, what forms of uh, struggle what tactics we can develop to deal with the catastrophe because climate catastrophe is still there exactly thank you you got okay. all of that thank okay. you thank you all right okay um we're still talking i'm surprised because i think that uh, usually we stop 15 minutes to the full hour, but nothing is happening. Okay, let's talk. Um, oh, I need to plug in my phone. Um, if I can keep the video on, I will. But I may have to turn the video off. Okay. Because I'm just getting low on battery and I'm not okay. sure if I... Okay, but, but stay Sorry. with us. Stay with I will my... stay with you for sure, <laughs> but I may have to go blind, and I apologize okay. for that. Okay. So I, think I will <laughs> just until okay. my battery charges enough. Okay, uh, Margaret, would you listen to me? Certainly. Thank you. Mm. I am a regenerative cultures uh, person, and. I am in regenerative cultures working group and I'm interested in region in my local group. I'm doing empathy circles. I'm regenerative cultures person. I stop that. So yes, regenerative culture sounds very important to you in many aspects in your group. Um, yeah, you mentioned another, a couple of areas where you were involved. It just, and in your heart, I think you sound like, it's very important to you. Yeah. And <laughs> I will mute, Jim. <laughs> um, and I start thinking that probably I don't fit, I don't match uh, NVDA. I'm not able to do that. And that's okay. Not everybody has to do that, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, I feel like probably I'm not 
uh, kind of in a state of mind and body that I'm not ready for that now. So um, the nonviolent direct action, you don't feel that is really something that you can feel comfortable with. Yeah. 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 I love theory of uh, nonviolent direct action, civil disobedience. I love the whole theory of um, social movements, Gandhi, nonviolent, nonviolence. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I actually studied that, so it's something that I'm very uh, uh, close to. I feel kind of uh, connected with that, but. I don't feel like I can go hit the streets now and do that. Somehow it's not my my time. So you you did a lot you even studied nonviolent direction. You, you studied Gandhi. Mm -hmm. Um and you you agree with it, but somehow it doesn't feel like you um to go on the streets is your thing at the moment. Yeah. But I truly believe that we need to develop regenerative culture within the movement and build community of activists, people who feel good with each other and want to be with each other. Uh, so, um, yeah, just keep that point. So, um, you felt developing regenerative culture within the movement was important so that um, people could feel to pull to work together and feel trusted with each other to activists as well but to, if they feel um bonded together with yeah. this in regenerative culture yeah i i dream about creating a community of activists that's what it regenerative culture uh, is for me a community of activists so you dream about developing a community of activists where this regenerative culture is the link mm -hmm. that helps you stay united mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think if we, I'm trying to do that in my local group. I'm trying to do that doing empathy circles. And I believe that if we succeed to create something, it will be a process. There will be ups and down, up and downs. It's normal. But if we start, initiate, and develop such a process among us, it will spread beyond the movement. So um, you're saying if you can, we can develop it within um, the movement, it will expand out of the movement. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I believe that's how we can build the alternative to the civilization we live in. And that's how we can create the change. So that's how we can um, build the change if we can expand it out into the culture. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. I feel hurt. Um, thank we you. have last few minutes. You can choose whoever you want to speak. Oh, I think, <laughs> God, I've, I think I've... Um, um, Yes, I suppose. Um, Hello, whom are you speaking to? Oh, um, well, me, James, you've been quiet for a minute, or do you want to listen again? Or you... <laughs> we might get cut off abruptly. Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> I just thought um, it was um, April who talked about um, resilience, because um, I suppose I've only started getting a bit more... Um, understanding of this deep adaption yeah i um 
I took it, I was a bit averse to it at first. I felt it was like um, giving up, you know, that um, you just enjoy nature while we've got it and build your relationships and enjoy your relationships with people. But trying to ask for change, it seemed like they were, that's my, that's my understanding. Okay, so I'm hearing you recognising the importance of resilience and hearing that start to be floated by, by Cara and starting to get to grips with the theory of deep adaptation and initially you, you saw that as being quite um, negative and defeatist but sort of like, and, and looking at recognising the connected with nature, enjoying things whilst you can, but, but not seeing the positivity in it. Yes. I think there's, um, yeah, maybe I still haven't gone down that road enough. I just feel um, there's too much more of a fighter in me to, um, to give up that yet and but i i sort of do understand what you're saying though when you said um it's very hard in this climate to do anything um that's um you know disruptive or whatever you know we can't you know more than two people you know you can't do it okay so you're saying there's, there's quite a lot of the fighters still in you <laughs> and you're not ready to give up that you accept that there are some limitations around with the current environment and, and, and you know, not giving the example of not being able to eat, meet up with people outside of your own household or more than two people at one time. But um, there's, there's, there's um, somebody, I don't know if you know Dale Vince, you know, he, he runs Ecotricity, sort of big in, in this area. Um, but, um, he's got billboards around the country saying there is another way to live. And I'm, I'm sort of inspired to do something, you know, in my inspired, local group on you're this. You're inspired to look at the other ways to, to live because yeah. I'm just aware that we're going to be thrown yeah. out of this room. In <laughs> yeah. Seconds. Yeah. But let's continue. Let's continue. Okay. Well, then it just, I would like to do some sort of fly posting or, um, or if, you know, billboards are cheap enough to do something that would inspire people to think about what sort of future they want without being too um, putting them down. But he, he's just saying on his billboards, it's saying there is another way to live, you know, because all of our consumption and our flying and, you know, you people, yeah. Everybody coming back. I think we're everybody's back. Oh, great. So, uh, yeah, welcome back to the full group. We, we have uh, half an hour, up to half an hour to uh, debrief uh, this call. And uh, uh, you don't have to stay for the full time. If you're like pressed for time, this is a good time you can drop out. But we'd love to hear your feedback uh, about your experience uh, in the call. Um, so the the first the first uh, question.